This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. And we're not going to talk about the market. We're not going to talk about options right now. What I want to talk about and come at this from a little bit of a different angle is what is going to be like the end result of this black gender war on social media? So what we have is we have a lot of people creating content on social media based around attacking members of the opposite sex of their same race or ethnicity. And the question is, what is going to be like the result of this? So what is what is going to be the end result of all of this content creation? Because this has been going on a few years and I've asked a lot of people that I know that have a background in media. Like, what is all, where is all this coming from? Because it, it very much surprised me when I got on social media that this was going on. And they kind of gave me some of their interpretations of the situation. But I want to really reach out to the people that are consuming this content and also the people that are creating this content. Because many people are content creators in this space, but they're what I call micro content creators where they don't have a big following, but they add to it by consistently creating content about this. So I want to speak to that person first, right? So I'm not going to get the big people, right? The the massive people that have massive followings because they've been able to create a a monetization around that. And for a lot of our people that, you know, if we can make money doing something, then our attitude is it got to be all right. So I'm not speaking to those people because there's nothing I'm going to be able to say to convince them. But I want to talk to some of the people that are doing this on a micro level, right? And they think that this is going to be their path to success. Let's say that you decide that you want to build a following on social media. Okay. For, you know, business reasons, you just want some attention. You just want some clout, right? You want some people to listen to you. And you decide the easiest way, the path, the least resistance to do that is to get involved in the gender war. So let me talk about members of the opposite sex of my same race or ethnicity. So you start creating this type of content and you justify it, you rationalize it by, hey, I'm just trying to get my business popping. Or I'm just trying to get people to listen to my message. So I'm going to use this to draw them in. Or I'm just trying to help people. So I'm going to use this kind of content to get their attention. And I'm going to turn around and reverse it and flip them to get them to turn it in. Like, you know, I'm taking uh, medicine and I'm putting inside candy. Like, that's how you're going to rationalize it. What I want you to understand is that that message is a miserable message. It's a miserable message, right? To um, have this type of animosity and disdain for members of the opposite sex, right? Is really a miserable message. And we're going to get into why it's a miserable message. However, it is a miserable message. And what is going to happen is that you're going to attract miserable people to you. And really, you're going to attract like minded people to you because you got to understand something. You can't create this kind of message on a consistent basis unless some of it is in you. So one of the things that, you know, you're not going to be able to do as a creative is create something that's not already inside of you. You know, you won't be able to do it on a consistent basis. Now, if you're a Denzel Washington type actor, you know, you understand the method acting series or maybe if you're, you know, a Rush Limbaugh level of uh, recording professional. You can come on a platform on a regular basis and put on a performance. But the average person on social media is not that skilled and they're not that talented. They're producing content that is already inside of them. So they're a miserable person who now can easily create a miserable message. And what happens is that this miserable message, you're going to put it out into the environment. You're going to vibrate on this particular miserable wavelength. And then what you're going to do is you're going to attract those same kind of people to you. So you're going to get just what you desire. You're going to get notoriety. You're going to get attention, right? You're going to maybe be able to be successful in whatever business you have going on by attracting these miserable people to them and then relaying their thoughts back to them. Because the only reason they're going to continue to sit around and listen to you is because they believe that you're speaking for them and you're relaying their values right back to them. So they have disdain for members of the opposite sex of their same ethnicity and their same race, right? They do. And they think that, okay, you represent that. You might be a better speaker than them. You might have the desire to create more content than them. You might have more initiative than them. So now they're going to listen to you, right? Because you're going to relay their values and principles back to them. They're going to agree to you. They're going to promote you. They're going to exalt you, right? Which is what you're looking for. But what you got to understand is this. 
you've attracted miserable people to you. You've attracted miserable people to you. And so now when you realize that you're dealing with miserable people with a miserable attitude, miserable thoughts, miserable behavior, miserable perspective on life, and they start acting that out now to you because you don't have the ability because you're really not as talented and as skilled as you think you are. So you're a good persuader, right? You're just not as good as a persuader as you think you are. So you can attract this particular group to you. Your management of this group is where you're going to find out you're not as skilled as you thought you were. And so now when they start taking their miserable attitude and their miserable views and they start spewing this on you and they start attacking you. What a lot of you are all going to say is that, you know what? This is why I don't like social media. This is why I don't like dealing with black people. This is why I don't want to help black people. This is what happens when you help black people. But you know what? You created that messaging. You created this persona that you're acting on the internet, which is really not 100% a persona. It's really who you are as a person, right? You created enough continuity or enough consistency in this space where you started attracting these people to you with your miserable message. Then you assembled this group of miserable people without having the understanding and the foresight because you really don't understand how to persuade and influence people at a deep level because you haven't been trained properly, right? That they're going to now turn around and start becoming miserable towards you because they got to get it out of their system. So they're going to do a thing called proximity where whoever they're proximal to is going to get all of their miserable behavior. And so you can't turn around and try to blame the social media platforms and say, well, you know what? I'm going to get off social media because I don't like the way people are coming at me. Well, these are the people that you attracted to yourself. These are the people that responded to your messaging. These are the people that got on one accord with what you were talking about. So you were successful in doing that. So now you got to deal with everything that comes with it. Don't blame social media. Look at yourself and your behavior. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Because I don't think you really thought about, well, what kind of person am I really attracting to myself? If I'm attracting a person that is going to be responsive to this kind of message, what kind of person is that? What is going on in their life? Right? What are they really going through where well, this kind of message will respond to them, will resonate in their brain? Now, we got the people that say, well, you know what, David? I created this kind of messaging on social because I wanted to create a counterbalance to what other people were doing. So I got on social media two years ago and I saw that all these black men was creating content that was negative towards black women. Or I got on social media and I found out that all these black women was creating content that was negative towards black men. So I wanted to create a counterbalance to that. So that's why I create the content that I create that now, you know, I guess I'm in some type of quasi competition with them for content creation where I'm demeaning and disrespecting and down talking the member of the opposite sex of my ethnicity or race. That, like that's the contest now. My question to you would be, how do you determine who wins this? What is the milestone for a win? Is the milestone that they're going to get off social media? Is that the milestone that you're going to create so much content they're going to just give up? Is a milestone that you're going to create content that's going to be so negative and so derogatory towards uh, their group that they're going to just say, you know what, I can't deal with this and they're going to leave? Is a milestone going to be that, you know what, we're going to harass this person, right, in real life so much that they're going to not leave social media? How do you determine a win in this situation? And if you can't determine a win, then why are you doing this? What do you desire to be the end result? Right? Or do you just want the end result to be that I just get a lot of attention and I get a lot of people to assemble around me, right? That exalt me and promote me because I'm doing what they want to be done, even though they're not going to do what they self. So if you're creating content that you say is going to be in opposition to content that is already being created, what do you want the end result to be? Is this the only way you know how to promote whatever you got going on by being involved in these particular type of gender wars where all I'm going to do is jump on this live stream or create this content multiple times a week. And I'm just going to sit around and talk about how this example, right, can be inferred as a larger example of why this particular type of sex of person is wrong. Is that's what you're going to do? And the question I want to ask is that 
how do you determine what the wind is? And most of y'all are not going to be able to answer that question because you haven't thought it out that far. So what are you really involved in? And then if you're going to create a miserable message, a message just that's really designed for the most miserable person in the world, because I don't know anybody that sits around and thinks the worst, right? The worst of their counterpart from a biological sex standpoint is a very happy person. And they consume this kind of content all the time. To me, they can't be a happy person. So you assemble this group of miserable people around you, right? And then you get upset when they give that misery right back to you. See, you the one, you were the person giving it out, and then they're gonna give it right back to you. And then now you upset, and now you start talking about how social media is messed up and how black people are messed up, yada yada yada. You need to look what you created. What did you manifest? And now that you're getting what you manifested, how come you're not happy with it? Now let's roll into the second part of this. The people that are creating this kind of content, that are so compelled to create this, they're so convinced, right? They think this is their ministry. This is what I want you to really think about. If you believe that the opposite sex of your ethnicity and gender is the worst thing in the world, this is really what you're talking about. You're talking about members of your own tribe that disappointed you in some way. They weren't there for you. They didn't give you a, a positive point of reference for that type of person. And then you're now trying to infer that for every other group in this world. So let me give an example. If you are a woman and the black men in your tribe, your immediate family, we're not a good representation of a man. So then therefore, you don't even understand what a good representation of a man is. You were disappointed. You was discouraged, right? You're disgruntled. You need to deal with that on a tribal level, on your group, your immediate group level. What you cannot do is now say, you know what? Every other black man is the same way as these black men that I've dealt with. Because you know what? That jacket doesn't fit. It don't fit on me. So it don't fit on everybody. And you trying to put that jacket on everybody is incorrect. And then what you do is you go find a bunch of people that have that same myopic point of view. And then all of y'all get on one accord and y'all think y'all have discovered something. The same thing if you a black man. If you a black man and the black women in your particular group or your tribe was the worst representation of a woman. Right? You cannot infer that for every black woman in the whole world. Why? Because that doesn't have anything to do with them. You need to deal with the fact that the women in your tribe and in your group was a bad representation of black women. You're disgruntled. You're discouraged. Right. You're frustrated. And you need to deal with that as opposed to trying to broadcast that out and make that a representation of every black person in the world. You don't have you don't even understand statistics, statistics enough to understand how to infer to a larger population. You really don't. And I know because I listen to a lot of y'all try to make statistical representation and you try to repeat surveys that you've read and you really don't understand what you're doing because you don't have a quantitative mathematics background. This is deeper than you taking something off the internet and you repeating it because it, it helps support the point that you're trying to make. Quantitative methods doesn't work that way. You just think it works that way because you don't have a background in that area. So a lot of you really need to deal with the fact that the people in your tribe and in your group failed you or you perceive them as failing you. And you need to go to a therapist and deal with that because that's your real problem, right? That's your real issue. But instead, what you do now is you try to ignore that and you want to try to broadcast that out to the world that every man, right, that is of a certain particular race or ethnicity, right, is, is a bad person because of this. Or every woman that's a certain race or ethnicity is a bad person because of this. When in reality, right, you're still trying to deal with the fact that you may have childhood drama that's still unresolved. You may have childhood trauma that's still unresolved and it got brought into adulthood and now you have a platform to act all of that out. That's your real issue. So really, you just need therapy. YouTube can't help you. Twitter can't help you. Facebook can't help you. Instagram can't help you. 
TikTok can't help you. In fact, it's really enabling your trauma. It's making it worse. It's not making it better because you're ignoring the real issue going on inside your life. But I'm not going to allow you to paint a picture of me that I now have to try to disprove because you don't understand that your real problem is that the people of your tribe or of your group, they failed you. I don't have anything to do with that. And it also don't have anything to do with my tribe and my group. Just because we got the same skin color, I'm not going to be responsible for that behavior. I won't. And that nobody in my group or my tribe is going to be responsible for that behavior, male or female. You really got to understand that. So now let's roll into the second thing. Most of the people that have taken any kind of course from me, they have bought something from me, right? Um, that is informational or educational via my social media presence has all fit certain archetypes. And I've noticed that. And most of them, not 100% of the time, but most of them have all fit a certain archetype. So let me give an example. Most of the people that I've done business with via my social media platforms, the majority of them have been black women. Out of that black women majority, right? There's a cross section. Many of them have been married women. These are black women that have been married. A lot of them have been married for years. Some of them have been black married women that desire to be married. They're just not married yet. And they desire to marry black men. The other segment may be women who may be married. They may be unmarried. However, they had a good relationship with their father. They still have a positive relationship with their father. Their father was a positive person in their life. Right? My presentation on social media, the marketing that I do, the videos that I do, the audios that I do, it attracted this archetype and these specific archetypes of women to me to do business with me. And I always, I already understood that because I understood that from dealing with women to where if you're a woman and you are not raised right around men who was about something, but most importantly for a lot of them, if you weren't raised around men in the house, or you don't have a man in your house currently, one of the two, you either have experience with it previously or you currently are experiencing that now. The way I present myself, the way I carry myself will literally be aggravating to you. A lot of men find out the way that because of this issue going on, that they may have to soft shoe it with a woman to get along with her. And because I don't do that, I don't attract certain type of women to me. And I'm fine with that. I had a woman that um, I've done business with and I'm currently still doing business with. And she took some of my videos and she showed it to some of her girlfriends. Right. And they told her, like, I don't like how this guy talks. He talks too hard. Right. And I understand that because, like I said before, is that if you're a woman and you may not have had a certain type of exposure to, to men in certain environments, the way I carry myself, the way I present myself, it may turn you off. And I'm fine with that because what I don't do is I don't attract miserable people to me. I don't attract those kind of people to me at all. None of the women that I've dealt with from a business standpoint, we don't have any, any, any issues as far as they don't like me because I'm a man. I don't like them because I'm a woman. They expect the worst out of me. I expect the worst out of them. We don't have any of those type of issues. The business goes very, very, very smoothly. Why? Because I don't have a message that attracts miserable people. Because I don't have a gender war message, right? My message is not about gender war. My message is about business. My message is about trying to build some wealth. My message is about trying to generate some more income. My message is trying to get you to stop being so much of a trick. I don't have a gender war message. So I don't attract those type of miserable people to me because I understand what they're going to bring. So the question I want to ask is that, if you're listening to this type of content all day on the, on the internet, why are you attracted to it? Why are you attracted to content to where a guy gets on social media and he figures out a way to talk about why black women ain't about nothing? I don't care if he tries to backdoor it. He's, he's doing the same thing. A black woman gets on the internet and she tries to talk about why black men ain't about nothing. I don't care if she tries to backdoor it. I'm intelligent enough to understand that's what these people are doing. They're trying to backdoor their way to a situation. Why are you attracted to this type of content? What has happened in your life where you even have a point of reference for this content? 
how come this content is not in, in total contradiction to your experiences? Well, you like, this don't even make no sense. That's like somebody creating content that say, you know what? Black people uh, have wings in their back and they come out at one o'clock in the morning and they fly around the city at night. And then when sun up comes up, the wings go away and they go about their normal lives. I'm not going to listen to that. That don't even make no sense to me. I don't, I, I can't even relate to that. So ask yourself this question. Why does this kind of content, right? Even entertain you? How does it get into the theater of your mind and will you sit down and pay attention to it? And then the second question is, if you're involved in this gender war, what's the W? How do you how do you determine who wins this? Right? Because I know a lot of y'all thinking that this is going to allow you to get some level of success. And even if success is nothing but just I want some attention. The majority of people are making social media content around this. They're never going to get to a level of monetary success around this content. So is the is the W just I can get I can build some attention because I've seen people on YouTube where they just got a bunch of miserable people boosting them up on YouTube about the content that they're creating to disrespect right members of the opposite sex and to them that's enough and I can listen to way to the, to the way that these people talk to this type of stuff that comes out their mouth I can tell that they haven't really been anywhere and I can tell they really ain't been around nobody I can tell. And so to them, they're speaking from their limited experience of life and they're assuming that everybody else that they're looking for people that have to have have had that same limited experience and they're getting on one accord on social media. But how do you win at this? So are you doing it because you think that you're going to get to some type of result that's going to be positive or favorable to you? Or are you doing this because you're just a miserable person and that misery has built up in you at such a level? kind of like a, a, a tea kettle or a, a pot that's under a lot of pressure because of steam, you just got to get it out. Is that why you're creating all this content? Right? And it don't matter what side that you're on, why have you gotten into a continuity of creating this content for so long? What do you get out of it? And so that's what I want to ask you because I think it's very, very unfortunate in 2021 with all this stuff going on, with all these opportunities that we have in America, that we're creating this kind of content. And when we look at contemporaries from other parts of the world who don't necessarily have the same advantages that we have. I know a woman from Ethiopia where you got like 15% internet uh, penetration, right? And their internet is very intermittent, which means that it's not always available and on. And they don't create this kind of content. So what is going on to where we have all this access, we have all this opportunity, and we just want to utilize a platform to create negative content, right, as a form of expression. And then we just want to attract a bunch of other people who want to boost us up to create more content so they can feel good about our situation. And that's what we're doing for affirmation and recognition in the world. In a country where you have all these different lanes in which you can get affirmed and recognized in. That's very interesting. It's something that needs and really requires a lot of deep study. So if you know somebody that can get value from this, share it out. If you, you want to uh, have any comments, hit me up in the comments. This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, and I'll talk to you later.